Dynamite comes in small packages. We got a live feeding coming up. Dynamite Squad, don't go away. Buddy, we're at Venom Central. <coughs> I got a little bit of a cold today, so you gotta forgive me. But today, we're gonna talk about pygmy rattlesnakes. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos. The Venom Squad, let's get on it. Let's push it. Let's grow. Let's do this together. But, anyways, we're gonna talk about pygmies today. Now, here in the States, we've got three species of pygmy rattlesnake. And they're actually one species, but they break off into subspecies. We've got the, the, the Florida pygmy rattlesnake, the Cistars malarius bobberi. We've got the western pygmy rattlesnake, which is the Streckeri. And then we've got the Carolina pygmy rattlesnake, which is the malarius malarius. And I've bred all three species. I actually used to work pretty extensively with pygmy rattlesnakes. You can go on my, um, on my what's it called, babe? Community. On my community page and see one of my old articles on there. But anyways, I used to breed the red pygmy rattlesnake in mass quantity. But I'll tell you, what I keep now is I keep the Mexican pygmy rattlesnakes. I don't keep a lot of native stuff that, that I just can't go out and catch. I mean, for me, seeing it in the wild is, a, is the ultimate high for me. So I keep things that I can't go work with every day in the wild, that I can't go find, and I just can't go jump in the car and ride 20 minutes and go see. Since I moved to the southeast, I don't keep no, no, no native animals from down there. There's, there's no need to. As much as I love eastern diamondbacks and the little pygmy rattlesnakes, it's funner for me to go see them in the wild. That's, that's what I enjoy the most, is finding snakes in the wild, studying them in the wild. So I keep a lot of Mexican species and Central and South American species of rattlesnakes. But I keep the Mexican pygmy rattlesnake, the Crowless Ravis. And it's confusing because all the Mexican pygmies, and there's actually a couple subspecies of the Ravis too that's recognized. They're lumped into the crotalus. They're not cystaris, even though they do have the enlarged scales on the head. And it used to be cystaris. Now they're all lumped into crotalus. So anyways, with that boring stuff. But we're going to talk about pygmies and how I take care of my mountain species rattlesnakes. Now, mountain species, that, that's, that's kind of a, a weird saying. It's, it's not a mountain species. It's mountain. It's because they come from a high elevation. Now, these snakes are used to cooler climates, and they're, some of them are really high elevation where you keep them in the high 60s and low 70s so they fare well. Now, the radius that I have, I've got three adults, and we're planning on breeding them this year. So we moved them out of the rack and out of the main room, and we're getting ready to put these guys in a brumation. But they'll sit here for another couple weeks, and they're getting ready to have their last feeding. And the last feeding of the year for these guys is going to be live. So you guys are going to get a treat. You're going to see a, a rabies tag a live mouse and kill it. So care on these guys. I'm going to pull one out and show it to you. Now, these guys are squirrely. So I'm going to be chasing him all over the damn table. But they're awfully squirrely and they're fast. But care for these guys. Now, is it like the pygmy rattlesnakes we have here? You know, the ones we keep here in the States, you know, a lot of keepers have them. They're a fun little species to keep. You know, you keep them, you know, high 70s, low 80s, and they do well. You know, these guys require a cooler temperature, and they require a long knockdown period to breed them. They actually got to be brumated. So they got to be, they got to be put into a hibernation state for them to reproduce. But, oh, I see you looking at me, you little shit. And the thing is, with, with pygmies now... They don't know a whole lot about the rabus venom, and I've been looking into a lot of different stuff about rabus, and as far as it being a deadly snake, it's really not, but I imagine it could still hurt you, and it'd be a, a bad day if you got bit by one of these little shits. But now, the adult length has 16 to 20 inches, and this is actually a big one. This one is actually pretty good size. I had a, a fellow over here a few weeks ago who was who is into 
Mexican pygmy rattlesnakes, and he's got a big group of them. And he seen mine, and he was like, oh, my God, they're huge. I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe they're on steroids over here, but on Central, everything gets big over here at my house. But they fare well at a cool temperature. And I keep these guys in the main room here, which this room stays at 78 degrees, and they stay at room temperature. Now, that's their summertime temperatures. But I'm getting ready to knock these guys down to the 50s. So they'll have a nice cool down so they'll be ready for next year's breeding season. And now these guys are maintained on a diet of just mites. Now in the wild, I would imagine that they eat. See, he's getting antsy. <laughs> so am I. I'm going to use my lid and I'm going to pick him up and put him in there. And you guys will be able to take a look at him. Through the camera on the other angle but anyways in the wild these guys would consume lizards insects probably small rodents but in captivity they do very well on a diet of, of just white mice just regular lab mice and that, that's what we feed them now I normally feed these guys frozen thaw but I'm out of frozen thaw of mice today so I thought well we'll give them a treat we'll give the venom squad a treat and we'll feed these guys live today and I, I breed my own mice just for this reason, because baby Bushmasters require live prey to start out. And my eyelash vipers, day old pinks. So it's nice to have your own mouse colonies going to pluck that stuff as you need it. And it makes things a little simpler. But I kill them off and freeze them by the hundred, so, and I just happen to be out. But anyways, we're gonna do a live feeding, okay? And I'm going to clip this guy up, and we're going to move another one up here, and we're going to pop a mouse in there, and we're going to watch the little rabies in action. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop a live mouse in here with this little rabies, and see how he does. And hopefully he's hungry. He looks like he's a little agitated, because we've had him out. But let's just see how he reacts today. We stand here still enough. Maybe he'll light that mouse up. Mm. Let's see. That's not promising. Let's see here. Come on, buddy. Do your thing. You can do better than that. Notice the enlarged scales on this snake's head. Not like your typical rattlesnake. Your typical crow lid would have a bunch of little scales. He'd have his, his, his ocular scales would be big, but he'd have small scales in place of them nine larger scales. And he's lumped all these into crowless anyways. But I still call them stars. <laughs> okay, he's going to freeze up on me here. He's waiting for that mouse to get in range. He just got in hunt mode what he did. And here he comes. He's putting that tongue out, picking up some smell. I know he wants it. He already took a poke at it. He's going to be patient. We're just not as patient as the snake is. We ain't got all day. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! oh, that was a hell of a bite. And my wife has got her, her eyes covered up. <laughs> I 
I know, baby. It's 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 kind of rough to watch, but this is the way it's the way it's done sometimes, honey. Oh, and a second bite. Oh, that was awesome. Now, let's just see how quick that venom takes effect on that rodent. Oh, he lit him up hard the second time. And a third bite. Now, I don't know if y'all can hear this, but this little rabus is, is slightly buzzing its tail. And it's just literally, it sounds like a bee buzzing a little bit. And the mouse is already... Oh, yeah, he's breakdancing now, y'all. He's The venom's taking effect. He can't write himself. And that's it. He's history. worked pretty fast now we don't know a whole lot about about the venom of this of this animal and I've been doing a lot of digging on it and uh, I, mean, I mean we believe it's it, it's mainly hemotoxic but I mean by the way this this mouse is acting I wouldn't say that it's got any neurotoxins present it's, it, it's usually when a, a, a prey atom gets infected or I'm sorry gets injected with he just bit him for a fourth time gets injected with a neurotoxin, it's, the mouse actually perishes a lot quicker and it stiffens up a little bit quicker. Like if, if, if this was a Mojave rattlesnake and he envenomated that mouse, you'd notice that that thing would, like, like, like my buddy, Desert Wolf Armory, when he feeds his Mojave rattlesnake, he calls it doing a stretch. You see that mouse just stretch out and that, that's, that, that's a symptom of a neurotoxic envenomation. But now this, this mouse has already perished. And the way it acted, just by the way it, I call it break dancing, the way it flopped around, it's, that, that's just from organ damage and tissue damage and pain. We don't suspect these snakes being very hot, being, being life-threatening, but who wants to get bit by one anyways, right? I know I don't. <laughs> We're going to just back up and let him do his thing. Pygmy rattlesnakes, what a little dynamo. I mean, dynamite really does come in small packages. Because that little son of a bitch was mean as they get. I mean, he bit that thing like four times. I mean, that was amazing. And uh, I'll tell you, he's a little firecracker, ain't he? But anyways, they're fun to keep. They're fun to watch. They're fun to study. But you got to remember, it's still a venomous animal. They're not pets. But uh, but I love working with these little pygmies. They're, they're just a lot of fun. But anyways, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video and give us a thumbs up. I'm going to give another big shout out to my Venom Squad. You guys are it. I hope you all like this video. And come on back because we're going to do some more stuff here real soon. Willie, Venom Central, checking out. Later.